Hallelujah. We magnify you, oh God. We have come to give you all the glory. Yes. We have come to give you all the praise. All the we adore you, King of Kings. We exalt your name. We magnify you. We enthrone you upon our praises this morning, oh God. We thank you, Almighty Father. We thank you, oh God. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. We thank you for your grace that is sufficient for us, oh God. We thank you for your loving kindness that is better than life. Wherever you are, just give the Lord glory. Give him glory. Lift him up, lift him up, lift him up. Worship him. Hallelujah. 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 All glory to God. We just want to welcome you this morning. We thank you that you are tuned in. We pray that you will be blessed this morning, even as we magnify the name of the Lord, as we glorify him this morning. Uh, we ask that you set up a watch party, that you will invite your friends to today's service, even as we give glory to God. Amen. We hope that you're ready to praise Jesus. Come on, put your hands together. You have your praise this morning. Put your hands together. We praise you. We praise you, oh Lord. We magnify your name. We magnify your name. We praise you. We praise you, oh Lord. We magnify.
joy and the lifter of our heads. Hallelujah. And we love him so much. We love him so much for who he is in our lives. Everything is turning around for your good. 
no matter the circumstances, Amen. it is turning around for your good. So I want you to lift up your hands, lift up your praise, and we sing this song in the praise. Hey. Oh. No weapon formed against you. No that day, a power not believe, no weapon from that catch me shall prosper. It's turning around for my good. Let me do one more time. I will be the head and not that day, a power not believe, no weapon from that catch you shall prosper. It's turning around for day. For me, around for one me. more time, say, I will, I will be the head, head no that above the pump. No, 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 Wakanaka, Wakanaka, 
Hallelujah to the Lamb that was slain. We give you glory, Lord. We come and know us. We come and know us. We who'd be found worthy in the heavens or the earth to pay the debt of the sin for everyone. We come and know us. Lord, the price that you paid will forever be enough. Yes, you paid it all for us. You made a way for us to triumph in your name. You have made a way for us to come into your presence with boldness, oh God. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You carry the scene of the world on your shoulder. You carry the scene of the world on your shoulder, Lord. He alone is worthy. He alone is worthy to worship. Righteousness is he. Our righteousness is he. Exalt the name. Exalt the name of Jesus. Shepherd, 
purchase our redemption. Our righteousness is here. Our righteousness is here. Exalt the name. Exalt the name. Exalt the name of Jesus. Say it one more time right here. Say he alone is worthy. He alone is worthy. To worship and adore. of God victorious from your house from wherever you are Righteousness is He. Righteousness is He. Exalt the name. Exalt the name of Jesus. He is worthy. Exalt the name. Somebody say, exalt the name, exalt the name Wherever you are right now, I am Lift up your voice in your house right now and exalt the name, say, exalt the name I am and worship him in your house right now go ahead and exalt him in your house right now lift him up in this place lift him up this Sunday morning lift him up this Sunday morning exalt the name of Jesus exalt the name of Jesus he's worthy go ahead and give him all the praise for he's worthy to receive the glory He's worthy to receive the honor. Worthy to receive all of the praise. I am Osha. Worthy to receive the majesty. We exalt the name. We exalt the name. We exalt the name of Jesus. Lift him up. Lift him up. Lift him up. Somebody help me say. He alone is worthy. Say. Worship.
Somebody help me say he's worthy. If you know he's worthy, let me hear you say he's worthy. If you know he's worthy, say he's worthy. Say he's worthy. Everybody say worthy is the Lamb. Seated on the throne. Seated on the throne. I crown you now with many crowns. You reign, you reign victorious. I am lifted up. Darling of heaven, the darling of heaven, worthy is the Lamb. Wherever you are right now, lift up your voice, lift up your hand, and say, Worthy is the Lamb. Seated on the throne. Let all the other names fade away. 
Let all the other names fade away. Let all the other names fade away. Till there's only you. Let all the other names Wherever you are in your hearts away. right now, say Jesus. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Say it one more time. Say, let all the other names. Let all the other names fade. Take your place. Lift your hand and say, Won't you come and take your place? Jesus, take your place. Lift up your voice, lift up your heart. Raise it up and say, Jesus, take your place. We just want you to take your place. We just want you to take your place. In this nation and across the nations of the world, in our lives and in our minds, we want you. In this house today, Jesus, take your place. What is saying? One more time, say, Jesus, take your place. Go ahead and tell him this morning. Jesus, take your place. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Jesus, take your place. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. We magnify your holy name. You can turn your house into your place of worship right now. You can kneel, you can lie prostrate, you can lift your hands. Go ahead and lift him up this morning. Lift him up this morning. Him up this morning. I am all shimmy, Baba Bus. You are awesome, Lord. You are awesome, Jesus. All the other names fade away. I'm saying. No other God can be called a father. No other God can be called a friend. No other God can be called a redeemer. No other God is coming back again. Say how we love. Jesus, you 
When you call the name 
one more time, won't you say the name of Jesus? Go ahead and bless the name of Jesus in your heart. Go ahead and bless the name of Jesus. Go ahead and bless his name. Jesus, you are holy. Jesus, you are holy. You are God. You are King. You reign alone. You are God. You are King. You reign alone. And you were first. You are the last. There's none. We say, Father, you are holy. Father, you are holy. And we say, Jesus, you are holy. Jesus, you are holy. Say, Father, you are holy. Father, you are holy. We say, Jesus, you are holy. Jesus, you are holy. You feel like saying that one more time. Say, Father. Father, you are holy. We say, Jesus, you are holy. Jesus, you are holy. Say, you are God. Say, you are God. You are King. You reign alone. You are God. You are king, you reign alone, say, you are God, you are king, you reign, alone. Won't you help me say, you are God and you are king, you reign alone, you are God, you are king, you reign alone. And when everything else is said and done, you are the first, you are last, say, you were first, you are the last, there's none besides you, there's none besides you, when everything is all done and said, you were first, you were first, you were the last, you were the last. there's no one beside you. Help me 
Say, you are God, you are king, you reign. You are God, you are king. Besides you, you are first, you are the last, there's none besides you. Lift your voice, lift your hand and say, If you're walking today, don't be afraid to just lift him up and worship him wherever you are right now. Shenayama kalama katebele kosi adagaya na nama shede de de basi. Father, we worship you this morning. Yes, Lord. We are grateful for a new month. Yes, yes. Grateful that you have carried us through yes. each and every day. Amen. Our lives <laughs> have become testimonies yes. 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 of your goodness. Yes. I know right over there somebody would say, man, we, you, you're stretching it, but we have, we have been doing some prayers for 21 days. We were winding up today. And, and today we were winding up with thanksgiving as well because God has been good. He has not allowed the predictions of the enemy to come to pass. He has confounded the wisdom of the wise. He has brought low the thoughts of the high. He remains God and he is God all by himself. And so we acknowledge him today and we give glory and honor to his name. For he alone is worthy to receive yes. all praise, adoration, and honor. Yes. So I want you to just join me from your house over there and give God a thanks and a praise right wherever you are in the name of Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, I thank you and give you the glory for all you've done and all you will do my life
life has changed and become a testimony. I give it all to you. I give it all to you. We sing it two times and we say, Oh Lord, I thank you and give you the glory for all you've done for all you've done and all you will do my life has changed my life has changed and become a testimony i give it all time oh lord oh lord i thank you and give I am you the glory for all you've done for all you've done and all you will do my life has changed my life has changed and become a test Say, I'm grateful. Say, I'm grateful, 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 totally grateful. Say with me, I'm grateful, 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 totally grateful. I'm grateful, God, grateful, Lord, grateful, God, grateful. through but the Lord has brought you through the Lord has led you the Lord has guided you the Lord has walked with you he has protected you he has provided for you he has fought all of your battles if you know say I'm grateful I'm grateful oh grateful grateful totally grateful has he been with you grateful has he led you through grateful has he held you up grateful totally Jesus, we are so glad that you join us in the second service today. Oh my good God. 
Oh, glory, glory, glory. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. He has kept us. He has held us. He has provided for us. He has taught us. He has led us. We are grateful. We've not had everything we wanted, but we are grateful. We've not been able to do everything we want to do, but we are grateful. We've not been able to go everywhere we want to go, but we are grateful. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Praise be to God. Amen. Welcome to the second service right here in New Beth Covenant Church. And we are glad that you are tuned in and you're watching. It's been good to have you. Such an amazing presence of the Lord in this place. And I am delighted right now to just get ready to bring you the word. Please help me appreciate this amazing team that is up over here. Glory be to God. Thank you for just showing up and doing God's work together with us. Glory, glory, glory be to Jesus Christ. Glory, hallelujah. Appreciate you for the team that we had, not only up on the stage, but even behind the scenes, the people who make sure that you're able to get the broadcast coming right to you wherever you are right now. And it's an amazing thing that God has been doing uh, with us and through us in this season. The sound on the media team as well. And everyone that is just participating in making sure that you receive what God has for you in this season. Glory, glory, glory be to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There is no one like Jesus. There is no one like Jesus. I want to receive the tithes and the offerings. I want to receive the tithes and the offering. But if you're watching us right there, uh, let us know where you're watching us from. Just, just register with us. Let's know that you're watching. Type right there, I'm grateful. Type right there, I'm grateful. Go, go, go ahead and just type right there that you are grateful because God has been good to you. And we want to know that you are grateful. Anytime you give thanks to the Lord, you disempower the enemy. You disempower the enemy. When the enemy wants you to look at the floods, when you give thanks to God, you raise a standard by the Spirit of the living God. So if you're there, you want to pay your tithe, you feel that you want to give your tithe, to pay your tithe uh, right into this ministry and you want to give your offering, feel free to do so. 655125 is the pay bill. 655125 is the pay bill. Uh, so you go ahead and do that. If you're watching from abroad, you want to do World Remit, you want to do uh, you want to do WAVE, you want to do World Remit, or even if you want to directly just give via m -Pesa, the number is 713-596-552. Uh, just send in your offering, your tithe, 5561-0713-596-552. That is for WAVE, World Remit, or m -Pesa. But if you're using PayBill, it's 655125. Indicate uh, in the account whether it is your tithe or your offering. And we will be glad just to, you know, receive it. And now, Father God, I pray for your people as they give, as they release their tithes and their offerings. May the grace and the blessing of the Lord rest upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. Cause the earth to yield increase to them. Cause them to go forth and break forth in abundance and in uh, expansion in the name that is above every name. Even the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Amen and amen. Glory be to God. Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to Jesus. Now, our services on Sunday, 8.30 a.m., we have our first service. Then we have the 10.30 service, which is what you are in right now. At 3 p.m. tonight, we're coming back every Sunday. We come at 3 p.m. But tonight we will be winding up on a teaching revival that I started on Wednesday. So I would not want you to miss out on it. Just be a part of it in the name of Jesus Christ. Tomorrow, Monday, uh, up to Friday, we also broadcast in the morning from 6 to 7 a.m. We call it morning mist. 6 to 7 a.m. We gather uh, around and uh, we just pray and hear the word of God. It's a one hour service, 6 to 7 a.m from Monday to Friday and we get to pray and feed on the word before we go into our offices or various places of work or even if you're working from home it's a good way just to help you to pray and to have the word of God come to you while you are in the house to energize you in the morning but then beginning tomorrow which is Monday at 3 p.m. we will have what we call Commonwealth which is 
um, a, a broadcast that we will be using to look at the scriptures in regard to wealth, wealth creation, wealth management, just looking at stewardship and the kingdom economy. We'll be looking at the Bible and looking at what is God's mind concerning wealth and concerning the believers and their place in the marketplace and their place in the kingdom of God. We'll be looking at that from tomorrow, 3 p.m. and every other Monday. We will be doing that. So you'll see the flyer run at some point. Uh, make, make a point to just join us tomorrow, 3 p.m. every Tuesday. We are here for the victory service. Wednesday for the winds of worship. And the team that is with us up here comes on every Wednesday to just lead you and usher you into the presence of Lord of the Lord again. Thursdays we have the School of Faith. And then we have a talk show on Saturday called the Saturday Starter. And it is a whole package. So just note it. Get notifications on so that you can be part of what God is doing through us in this season. Amen and amen. Praise be to Jesus Christ. All right, I want to go to the scriptures in Genesis chapter 8, a few portions of scriptures here and there. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 8. And then we read a few portions of scripture and we will be done. I hope that within this season you have been learning certain lessons that will build you, will help you, will usher you into what is next. Somebody asked me one time, um, how do you get ready for the next? And I say, the only way to get ready for the next is by what you're doing now. And so I hope that you are learning lessons as I am through this season. Uh, for some people, it's been seven weeks. Yes, seven weeks of very little activity. But I pray that you have gained wisdom and knowledge and understanding, grown in all kinds of ways in the name of Jesus Christ as well. Praise be to God. Now, Genesis chapter 8 and verse 1. Then God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the animals that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters subsided. The fountains of the deep and the windows of heaven were also stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained and the waters receded continually from the earth at the end of the 150 days the waters were decreased then the ark rested in the seventh month and the 17th day of the month on the mountains of Ararat and the waters decreased continually until the 10th month in the 10th month on the first day of the month the tops of the mountain were seen I need you to notice that after the flood and Noah was looking forward probably to a return to normal. And normal was not coming in on a switch. The normal was not coming back on a switch. That there was progressive return to what would seem to be normal. Yet the truth is it was not going to be normal again. So slowly the waters were receding when the wind passed over the earth and the waters began to subside. It took quite a while. They were receding continually because the waters, uh, the waters did not just come up overnight. They came in. It took 40 days and nights of the rain just coming in. So the waters were receding. They were receding uh, slowly. And at the end of the 150 days, the waters decreased and the ark rested in the seventh month, on the 17th day of the month, on the mountains. And then the waters still continually were decreasing until the 10th month. In the 10th month, on the first day and on the of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. So it was a progressive move towards what was normal. And then verse 6, so it came to pass at the end of the 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. And he sent out a raven. And... Uh, which kept going to and fro until the waters had dried up from the earth. He also sent out from himself a dove to see if the waters had receded from the face of the ground. The dove found no place to rest the feet, and she returned to the ark to him, because the waters were on the face of the whole earth. So he put out her hand, took her in, and drew her into the ark to himself. He waited another seven days, and again he sent the dove out from the ark, 
uh, then the dove came to him in the evening, and behold, a freshly plucked olive leaf was in her mouth, and no one knew that the waters had receded from the earth. So he waited yet another seven days and sent out the dove, which did not return again to him anymore. And it came to pass in six hundred and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, that the waters were dried up from the earth. I needed to see that progression, that there was a decrease, and the decrease, the waters were receding, then there was no water. Then now in verse 13, it says that the waters were dried up from the earth. So the earth was no longer wet anymore, and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and indeed the surface of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the, ark, the earth was dried. Then God spoke to Noah, saying, Go out of the ark, you and your wife, your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out every living thing that is with you, birds, cattle, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may abound. And so verse 18, Noah went out, and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives, every animal, every creeping thing, every bird, whatever creeps on the face of the earth, and the animals of the earth. Now, I need to go into something else. Um, I just need to read another portion of the scripture um, in chapter 9, because I was reading all of these in the, in the morning as well, but then I don't want to read two chapters, but I'll go to chapter 9 and verse 20. Chapter 9 and verse 20. And Noah began to be a farmer, and he planted a vineyard. And Noah began to be a farmer and planted a vineyard. And I want to just talk to us this morning on adjusting to your new normal. Adjusting to your new normal. Father, we thank you for your word. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. I tried, I tried to find out what was the vocation of Noah before there was an ark. I tried to look through it, and all I could find were the thoughts of people. Uh, nothing really significant that would have come from biblical history or the students of biblical history. I did not find anything, uh, and maybe if you find it, you can tell me at some point, but I did not find anything that pointed to the vocation of Noah, what he used to do before the flood came. The reason I wanted to find out what Noah used to do before the flood came is because I started looking at the life of Noah and his adjustment to the time when the flood was gone. Normally, when we have an interruption to normal or when we have had a disruption to what we know to be normal, we will spend time waiting for what used to be our normal to come back. And we will be hoping and we will be praying. And genuinely so, we will wait and say, let me wait until things get back to how they used to be. That might be the place where most of us are today. I'll just take about 30 minutes and share this word with us. That might just be the place where many of us are today where we will postpone purposes and we will postpone progress because we want to see the return of things to the season before the disruption and interruption. You probably had plans. You probably had things, desires. You had laid certain foundations. You had uh, planned and programmed yourself for certain business. There were certain things concerning your life that you had written down, noted down. There are prayer points that you were making and you had it all figured out. And then the disruption comes. The flood which comes in and totally paralyzes every operation that is on the face of the earth. The reason why the scripture of Noah and the waters from Genesis chapter 7 all the way coming on caught my attention is because when the flood hit the earth, nothing was moving on the face of the earth. In fact, the scripture says that anything that was moving on the face of the earth was drowned by the waters. The waters, the floods that came in Noah's time totally and absolutely paralyzed every activity on the earth. That Noah had to go into the ark by divine instruction 
with his family and stay there in what somebody would think of as a lockdown and a total lockdown. He was in there with his family, God having provided for them. He had done what in our time we would say he had stocked up and he had everything that he needed in the ark for quite a while because it was not possible to go out. It was not possible to do business as usual. Now, in my thinking then, I started making my own I started making my own assumptions, which is not usually the best thing to do, but I started making my own assumptions that probably Noah probably could have been a builder. Probably he could have been a builder because the, the, the accuracy with which he built the ark, even though he had received the wisdom from God, but the ability to execute what God had in mind and cause it to come and be afloat on the waters would make me feel like Noah was a builder. He probably was an engineer and he built an ark from scratch using just the little things that he had and he built something that was going to defy all the forces that were coming against everything on the face of the earth. It's interesting that when, when, the, when the waters kept on picking up and piling up, the ark kept on going higher. It is interesting that the waters that were burying everything, including mountains, so you can imagine the height of the waters, that the waters that were burying everything, including the mountains, were allowing the ark to keep on floating. I don't understand what kind of mind this man had in constructing of the ark. But then having stayed inside the ark, for all those days when the waters were pounding the earth for the 40 days and 40 nights and having to wait for all the while that the water needed to recede, my first thing would be to think that Noah had, would suffer post-traumatic stress disorder because he has just been completely cut off from everything that is normal and everything that he is used to. His economy has been interrupted. His social life has been interrupted and has been interfered with. And he will come out of this place and the first thing he will find is the destruction. The other day, there were these pictures and the videos of the landslides up in the Rift Valley. I think it must have been Baringo somewhere over there. And people waking up and seeing that their neighbor's houses have been swallowed up in the ground. And they cannot see the neighbors. They cannot see the shops. They cannot see the animals. They cannot see anything. You go to sleep or you away. But when you come back, you find that what used to be normal and what had been built up has been flattened by something that should be a natural occurrence and the trauma to imagine that where that that where your neighbor's house was has just gone into the ground and your neighbor is in that ground is traumatic to wake up and find bodies that are dead to wake up and find a whole city that has been flattened and the stinking the stinking bodies all around of the animals and the people and of all the creatures that had remained to just wake up to all of that is traumatic so Noah has got the trauma of having been locked up in the ark for a while and then he meets this devastation that has happened and no matter who you were ladies and gentlemen it affects you it affects you because man is a social being these are people he was doing with business and these are people that he used to relate with and these are people he preached to remember when he was talking to them about the impending coming of the flood he was talking to these people he was connected to these people he loved these people he wanted these people to escape the destruction of the flood and he wakes up and you come in and you see the people that you want and they have gone into the very destruction that you are warning them i believe with all of my heart that that noah was going through stress i totally believe that he went into a depression he's coming out with his family and what used to be normal is no longer normal anymore what used to be normal is not normal You've gone back to it. The waters are no longer there, but it's not the same place. The floods are no longer there, but it's not the same place. And my thinking is that even if the doors of everything were to be opened today, it's not going to be the same place. It's not the same people. 
They have been conditioned differently. Interesting how people have been so conditioned that even people who are used to one another will meet each other and the immediate thing they think about is that they need to keep a distance because there has been a conditioning, a conditioning. So you're no longer meeting the same people. That everything you do, you know, you walk around and you see everybody, even if their masks are not on their faces but properly, but their masks are hanging somewhere. And yesterday I was asking my wife, I said, how much money has been made through the masks if somebody would just calculate Nairobi has about 4 million people and if, for example, over 2 million masks have been sold or made, fixed or whatever, at about a hundred shillings you're talking about nearly two billion because a different thing has just entered the economy about two billion plus shillings have entered just the economy of Nairobi because of the mask we have become different the conditioning has changed we have become people who feel a greater need for self-preservation to the point that now if you were to get out and begin to relate with people you have to adjust to what is the new normal there are certain things, ladies and gentlemen, that will never come back to how they were. I read how uh, airlines are selling off their planes and some of them are sending their planes to the place that they call the graveyard. It was Lufthansa the other day that I was seeing sending their huge planes into what is supposed to be the graveyards and they are canceling the orders that they had for aeroplanes because they feel that they will never need them again. And so they think that there's no need to carry on with this large aircraft because they don't know when it will take the world to get back to the place where you will have hundreds and hundreds of travelers getting into one flight. The sooner, ladies and gentlemen, we understand that when there has been such a magnitude of interruption and disruption that we need to adapt to a new normal, the better it is for us. The sooner you understand that when there has been such a disruption, the sooner you understand that when there's been such a disruption, the better for you to adapt to a new normal, the better it will be for you. I have to credit Noah, even though um, he must have been dealing with the Lord, I have to credit Noah for what the scripture says in Genesis chapter 9 verse 20. In fact, I've got to go back to verse 17. Verse 17 says, Now the sons of Noah who went out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Noah and, and Ham was the father of Canaan. These three were the sons of Noah, and from these the whole earth was populated. And so in verse 20, the scripture says, And Noah began to be a farmer. Noah realized that if he does not do something, he will be stuck, he will die. He understood that even though he cannot go back into how things were before, that he had been given an opportunity when he walked out of the earth and found the sun shining and he saw the land that was flooded and he saw the place that was plain right now, he understood that this this was a blank check and this was a new chapter that God had given him to start afresh. I need you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that this season is presenting you with an opportunity to start afresh. This season is presenting you with an opportunity to start afresh. There are a lot of things that you did well. There are a lot of things that you built well. There are a lot of things that you, you had gone far in doing. And you can choose either to count the losses or to begin looking at the opportunities. You can begin to think, you know what, uh, I lost this and I lost that breakthrough and I lost that door. And I was building this network and my business had gotten to a certain place. I remember a friend of mine was telling me how when he had moved churches and he went to a certain place, he told me for a long time he was affected because of the move. It was quite a significant move uh, in terms of distance and he was so affected because the people were not coming to where he was and then he needed now to reach out to the community where he was and he said to me, we were just beginning to pick up when COVID-19 came and there are a lot of people who feel that their lives were 
totally interrupted, interfered with because of what had happened. Sometimes you're just thinking, if this thing did not come when it came, I would have been on a higher plane. And the moment you begin having that kind of a thinking, the problem and the danger of it is that you can easily slump into discouragement. You can easily slump into discouragement because you begin to feel like the man who was by the pool of Bethesda that just when you were picking up and just when you are about to go into the next thing, something happens and interrupts you. Sometimes it can paralyze you from starting anything. It can make you feel like nothing is ever going to work. You look at the energy and the intensity of that energy that you have put into something and then it is shaken, it is brought down, it is interfered with, it is interrupted and you begin to feel, you know what, I'm not going to start anything again because I do not want the kind of interference and interruption that came into my life. It is the same thing that happens to people when they have lost a business, they have lost an investment, they have lost a relationship which they invested themselves in. They begin to fear to get into something else because now they have in their mind that it is possible to build something and lose it. They begin to think that I may be building this and I may lose it. I may invest myself in this marriage and still lose it. I may invest myself in a relationship and lose it. There are people who will never tell you when they have the second pregnancy because they lost the first one and now they are afraid. They are afraid because they feel I may talk about it and then lose the baby. There is something that happens to people when they face failure. There is something that happens to somebody when they have fa uh, uh, faced a loss because it causes them to begin to feel that it is possible to do everything right and still not have the kind of results that you wanted and the enemy easily can use that to paralyze you in fear so that you do not want to do anything that you think will expose you to failure but ladies and gentlemen it is a new month it is a new day it is a new season and I dare tell you that there are new opportunities even right now do not allow the enemy to paralyze you over things that did not work and things that you built up and came down and things that you invested in and were watered down. Do not let the enemy paralyze you by the fact that nobody else survived. Do not allow the enemy to paralyze you and make you feel if you do anything right now, you are going to lose it. There is God on your side. Glory be to Jesus. There is God on your side. Noah, he's out here. He's not a young man. He did not start building while he was young. I would have credited his youth if he had started building when he was a young man. But he's an old man. And when you build when you're old, I had an old man who was, uh, who was uh, a lover of my ministry and he would invite me over and over. And this old man at a point when he was about 60 years old was constructing church. And then the land on which they were constructing the church had... Uh, there was controversy around it and the church which they had built without the money of politicians, without anybody else coming out, but his congregation, they had raised the thing to the lintel and then there was controversy around the land and the whole building came down. And you see, it is painful to lose it even when you were 30 or 40, but at least when you were 40, you have the energy to start over again. How do you start over again? When you are in your weakest of years and you have used the greatest of your strength to build what just came down. Noah was not your young man. Noah was not somebody who was in his 40s or his 50s. Even though he lived up to about 900 years, he was not that kind of a young person. He was called out when he was already advanced in age and mature. And then everything that he ever knew was normal has completely gone down. Everybody he knew has died. He has his family around him which is just three sons and their wives and he comes out and he wonders what do I do and he says you know what I've got to learn how to deal with a new normal I've got to learn how to deal with a new normal I am tempted to say the first thing that Noah did was to build an altar <laughs> that's the first thing that he did because he was adjusting to how life was just going to be but my greater emphasis is on Noah in Genesis chapter 9 and verse 20. And Noah began. He had never before been a farmer. He's an old man. He has lost everything. 
and Noah began to be a farmer. One of the things you must understand if you're going to adjust to the new normal is that if you have desire, you can learn to start again. If you have desire, you can learn to start again. If you have desire, and Noah began to be a farmer. Never farmed before. Never tilled the land before. He was used to wood. He was used to hammers. He was used to nails. He was used to the the the. He was used to the planes. He was he was used to you know just just making sure that everything is built up. He was a builder before, but now he cannot build. He cannot build because there are even no people to inhabit the buildings. There are no people to inhabit the buildings. He can't build. There's no real estate to go into. And he says to himself, you know what? There is something else I can do. He began to be a farmer. If you have the desire, ladies and gentlemen, you can always learn something new. There are many people who are caught up in the place of saying, this is, this is all I have ever known to do. This is who I am. There are no jobs for me right now. There are no jobs because the kind of job, the kind of purpose that I have, the kind of expertise that I have, it's no longer working. And so this is all that I need to do. This is all that I know how to do. And they miss up on an opportunity to adjust to something that is new right now. I was meditating about this in the morning today and thought to myself, you will be amazed at how many people will have found an excuse with this season not to do well in their lives. Because everybody understands that everybody has been affected in one way or the other. So you will find people who will say, you know what, I tried business, it just did not work, it came down. But the truth is that the people who normally give up on those gave up even before we went into the COVID-19. They gave up on those dreams, gave up on those dreams, closed shop, pulled down business, decided to give out the office, took all their goods and shut their goods in the house, doing nothing with what they had. They had already given up in their mind because that's the place where most of us give up. It is not what happens to us. It is what is happening in us. It is what is happening in us. If I have given up on it, I will fold everything. The people who have property that they don't use, people who have machinery that they will never use, people who have papers that they will never use, people who have knowledge that they will never put to use. It is important for you, ladies and gentlemen, to adjust to your new normal. You may not go back to the job that you used to have. You may not go back to the friends that you used to have. You may not go back to the places that you used to go to. You may not even go back to the kind of ministry that you were doing. If you're a pastor right there, you may not even go back right there. You may not go back. You may find some of the people that have been around you have now become comfortable with an online church. They will remain members, but they want to be online. They have all their fears and all things. Remember, the waters were receding over time, the waters did not recede just overnight. It was receding over time. You may not get that. There are people, even if the doors were to be open for next Sunday, they will still be afraid because what is keeping them away is not a government order. It is a conditioning in their spirit. And so they will not walk in, not because they don't love you, but because they have their own fears and they may not walk in for quite a while until they hear that the coast is clear. And so you must learn how to adjust to a new normal without being afraid by what is your new normal. I want to show you what the scripture says. The certain things that we are going to look at right here. The scripture says in Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. In about another 10-15 minutes I will close. It's a short exhortation. Chapter 9 and verse 10. This is what you've got to do in this season, ladies and gentlemen. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. Woo. Whatever your hand finds to do, you may not find what you like to do. You may not find what you prefer to do. But whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. Don't do it in the hope that something else will come up. Do it with all your might. I believe prophetically that we are about to get out of the season of the shutdown. 
But then again, ladies and gentlemen, you must understand that while we are in the season, whatever you hand finds to do, do it with all of your might. Noah began to be a farmer. There is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you're going. Each and every day that you don't do anything is a day wasted because we are all marching towards the end of time. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. If you start a business right now, do it with all your might. If you begin farming right now, you do it with all your might. If you begin online classes for little children, do it with all your might. If you begin a training right now, you do it with all your might. Don't do it like this is what I'm holding on to before things return to normal. You do it as if this is all that you will ever, ever do. Noah became the first manufacturer. He was not only the first builder. He was not only the builder of the ark. Sorry, not the first builder, but the builder of the ark. He became the first manufacturer because when he planted a vineyard, when he began to plant and become a farmer, the scripture says out of what he saw, he began to bring out wine. He began to press wine out of it. And out of what was a calamity, the man created industry. Out of what was a calamity, the man created industry. I do believe that the reason the wine made sense at that time is that everybody was depressed. Everybody was depressed. They needed to escape from something. So the more they drank, the more they were happy. And they kept on doing that. And they were dealing with their stresses. And so this man who had just gotten everybody into the act is the first drunkard that is recorded in the scripture. Just to show you the power of traumatic stress, post-traumatic stress disorder. That this man had gone through so much that if he did not have a way of just relieving himself of the pain, it was very easy for him to go into destructive behavior. Anytime you do not deal with things that have happened to you, ladies and gentlemen, you easily go into destructive behavior. This is why it is important for you to begin learning new things. Learn new things. Learn a new way of life. Learn a new way, a new way of eating. You cannot meet in the restaurants. You can't go everywhere. Just learn something else. What can I do? I saw my boys coming up and my boys just decided that they were going to begin grilling stuff in my house. Uh, just about 15 and 11 and 1 turning 12 very soon. And so they just became these chefs in the house. You know, I was worried for them when we were starting this because I wondered how will these kids stay in those? How will they be in the house? How will they be without moving? Because even being in the house alone, if they stay there for one hour, they will be kicking the ball everywhere. They will be bringing down all kinds of stuff with the ball. They'll blow down the bulbs. I was thinking, how will these kids be here all this while? But then they begin to find new things to do. Just teach themselves new things. There is therapy in learning a new thing. Glory be to God. There is therapy in learning a new thing. That's why when you go through something, for example, like a breakup, and the time you used to use going for coffee, you can always walk into a gym and go and put your energy into something else. There is therapy in learning to do a new thing. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever your hand finds to do now, it may not be big, it may not be glamorous, it may not be paying you too much, it may not be the kind of thing that you really wanted, but whatever your hand finds to do do it with your might because there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going glory be to Jesus whatever your hand finds to do John chapter 5 one or two portions of scriptures John chapter 5, verse 6, verse 5, a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in it, that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? It's got to start with a decision, ladies and gentlemen. It has to start with a decision. Do you want to be made well? Do you want to be made well? 
I've had a few of my friends say to me, you know, uh, you people were prepared for this time. You were prepared for this season. That's why you've been doing the online ministry. And I laugh because nothing could be farther from the truth. But this teaching that I'm doing right now, this nugget that I'm just putting into your spirit, is everything about it. Nothing could be farther from the truth. I, I, I was preaching outside of town when churches were shut. I did not have the opportunity to meet any leader or anybody before the churches were shut. In fact, I had just preached a message in a certain church in Mombasa. And after I was done preaching, then the policeman came and said, you cannot have a second service. And that's the day the churches were shut. We did not have time to think about it. I was getting back to Nairobi on Monday. And on Tuesday, we began an online ministry. We were not ready, not prepared, no budget, no nothing. And just get into it. Because when you have a new normal, the faster you make adjustments, the better for you. The faster you make adjustments, the better for you. Initially, they said, you know, it will be about two to three weeks. Let's see how it will go. Then it just keeps on going. There are countries like Botswana shut down for six months. There are countries like South Africa that started locking down even before us. And they keep on extending and extending. Uh, the other day, the Premier League in, in, in England was supposed to be getting back by the first weekend of May. And then they have pushed it again. And there are times when you really do not know how long you're going to be while you're waiting for what you think is your normal. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the sooner you begin, the better. The sooner. He had been lying there for a long time. And Jesus says, do you want to be well? Do you want to be well? He had just been lying there. Do you want to be well? And he says, you know, I don't have anybody to put me in the pool. The things that used to work for me are not working. When the water is stirred up and other people, when I am coming, somebody else just steps down before me. And Jesus said, you know, you can take up your bed and walk. And immediately he was made whole. You will be shocked at how many things you can do if you determine to rise up. You will be shocked at what you can do. There's something about creativity. The creativity begins to flow when you start with the first idea. The moment you do the first thing, this next thing begins to come. And the next thing begins to come. That's why vision is progressive. And vision is line upon line and precept upon precept. The moment you do something, then you see how you can do it better. And you grow in it. You can never have the whole picture while just seated in one place. Glory be to Jesus Christ. You cannot just have the whole picture. Acts chapter 9. Or rather, let me read the chapter 26. Of Acts. Acts 26. Verse 9. This is Paul standing before Agrippa. He had been brought here. Let me just read a bit of the portion from verse 1. Agrippa said to Paul, you are permitted to speak for yourself. So Paul stretched out his hand and said, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because today I will answer for myself before you concerning all the things of which I am accused by the Jews, especially because you're an expert in all customs and questions which have to do with the Jews. Therefore, I beg you to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was spent from the beginning among my own nation at Jerusalem, all the Jews know. What is he saying? He says, the way I used to be, what used to be my normal, everybody knows. My manner of life from my youth, which was spent from the beginning among my own nation at Jerusalem, all the Jews know. He says, the way I lived, the way I lived my life is an open book. Everybody knows. Look at verse 5. They knew me from the first. If they were willing to testify and according to the strictest sect of our religion, I lived as a Pharisee. He said they knew me. They knew what I used to do. There is a certain system, pattern. There's a way I used to live my life, which everybody knows. That's who I used to be. That's who I used to be. And everybody knows that's who I used to be. One of the things that you must deal with when it comes to changing and adapting is the fear of answering the question of why you change. You cannot go forward when you are worried about what people will think about your change. You cannot go forward. A lot of people are prisoners to what they were used to and what they were, what they were before because they don't know how to answer the question and explain to everybody that they have changed. A lot of people are just out over there. 
out over there. So many people who were just out over there who were thinking, you know what? Oh my goodness, how, how, how will people think about me? What will people say if they realize that my normal has changed? And so sometimes they remain loyal to something that is no longer working. They remain loyal to something that is dying. They remain loyal to something that may never return. Because people have known them in a certain way. They've known you doing business. They've known you as an expert in something. They have known you as a teacher somewhere. They have known you as running a shop. They have known you in a certain way. And now you wonder... What will they think about me if they realize I am different? What will they think about me if they realize I have become something different? What will happen to the me? What will happen to my networks? What will happen to the investment? What will happen to the equipment? What will happen, happen to what I have? What will happen? And so we are afraid to make the switch and keep hoping that normal will return. He says in verse 6, now I stand. And I am judged for the hope. I am judged for the hope of the promise made by God to our fathers. Look at verse 9. Indeed, I myself thought I must do many things contrary to the name of Jesus. This also I did in Jerusalem. And many of the saints I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them, and I punished them. Verse 12, while I was thus occupied, I had an occupation. I had something I was doing while I was thus occupied. As I journeyed to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest, at midday, O king, along the road, I saw a light from heaven. This is what many of us need to do. We need a light. We need a light to show us what we now need to adapt to. We need a light just coming in to show us where we need to go. We need a light that will show us this is what you need to start doing in this season. We need a light that will cause us to move from the place of lack and scarcity. We need a light to put in us innovations. We need a light to cause in us to come out things that have not been done before. Levels of creativity. We need a light. Some of us need an encounter. Just something that will hit you and you wake up out of your slumber and begin to do something different and say you know it's not too bad I told you that there are probably two million masks in Nairobi right now that's quite some money right there but there are a lot of other things that need to be done there are a lot of other things that people are doing and they're making the money there are people whose business has just picked up in this season there are people whose ideas of businesses just came up in this season. There's somebody sitting somewhere right now and is thinking of how just to connect people. There's somebody who's thinking of how do we teach the very, very little children even online. Somebody is thinking right now, how do we get the people who are in the slums and they do not have too much with them, how can they get connected as well? There's somebody who this season has presented to them an opportunity to become creative. And there's somebody who's waiting. For everything to get back to how it used to be. The sooner you adapt, ladies and gentlemen, to the new normal, the better it will be for you. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. I was reading a post of a friend of mine who is pastoring in the U.S. I read a post. I looked at all the conditions that people have to meet to come to church. I thought, let's stick online. I thought, my goodness, that is so crazy. Everything has got to be fumigated. Everything has got to be sanitized. Every, every, every single step, you either have got to meet a sanitizer, you've got to meet something, you must meet a disinfectant and microphones and everything. You all are just paranoid in church. Absolutely. And so they were having their first service. They're having their first service today. I look at everything that they have said they're going to do. And I'm thinking, will people even receive the word? Because there's so much fear in that atmosphere. Totally. So much fear. But you see, it's because normal is different. <laughs> normal is different. Normal is different. Glory be to God. Some of us will need to go back to school again and get ourselves together in a profession because normal is different. Some of us will need to go and study something else because normal has become different. 
We may just need it to go into certain kinds of businesses. Some of us need to bring our businesses together and merge them because on their own they will not survive because normal just became different right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, glory be to God. Paul says, a light came shining around me and around those who were with me. And I had a voice speaking to me saying, why are you kicking against, why are you persecuting me and why are you kicking against the gods? He said, who are you, Lord? And I said, I am Jesus. He said, I am Jesus whom you were persecuting. One of the things that make people struggle to adapt, I share a few in three minutes and then we close. One of the few things that cause people not to switch. Number one, familiarity with what was. Familiarity with what was. They are used to it. It's normal. It's easier. You're familiar with how things used to be. You have invested in it. You have adapted. Your mind is, is tuned to it. You know where to start, where to finish. I mean, it's, it's not costing you anything. Change costs. Change costs. So familiarity. Familiarity to what was. It's easier to go back to the people that you know. It's easier to go back to uh, the thing that is not working. People say, you know, better the devil you know than the angel that you don't know. It's just the element of being familiar with it. And when you're familiar with it, you feel a bit comfortable. You are in charge. So people do not easily move forward into the next thing because they are already familiar with what they used to do. That's why when you take somebody from what they're familiar with, they will have a reaction. They will have a reaction. It may be what is called a withdrawal symptom or they may throw tantrums around it and, and about it because something has been taken away which they're used to. So they feel the loss of control. They feel the loss of control. They don't know how to act with it. You know, talking about withdrawal symptoms, I never knew how crazy those were until one of my brothers one time who was really into alcohol had to do antibiotics because he was unwell. And the doctors say to us, he should not take alcohol. The alcohol is not going to work with the antibiotics. You know that. So it's like you've got to stop drinking so that you take the antibiotics. And, and so when he was with me in the house, he struggled to do that. And I could not understand this man's pain. He struggled to do that. He would get into hallucinations. He would be seeing all kinds of crazy things around me. He would be seeing snakes in the house. He would be seeing all kinds of creatures in the house. Then he will sneak out, go and smoke, and come back, and he is calm. And I would be asking myself, what's wrong with this guy? We were trying to imprison him, in a sense, so that he does not take alcohol or anything that was going to interfere, one, with his health, two, with his medication. But what I did not realize was that there was such a struggle it is later on that I was told that when an alcoholic is going through withdrawal symptoms, they actually feel pain. They feel pain because there are messages that are being sent in the nervous system that this thing is not responding to. There is nothing to bring down that pain. They feel pain. So you'll see somebody cringe and cry and make sounds because they have been pulled out of something that they have gotten familiar to. And there are people who cannot go forward because they are now going through withdrawal symptoms. They are so used to what they used to do that when they don't do it, they feel so much pain. So much pain. They don't know how to live without what they have been doing. And it is blinding them to what they can do. It is blinding them to what is ahead of them. They just cannot do that because they are not in a place of normal. Number two, is fear. Number two is fear. Number two is fear. I talked about that a little bit. Ask the people who will be afraid. What if I start this and it goes down again? What if I try that and it doesn't work? Maybe I should just wait. Maybe I should just wait. Maybe one day something will come up. Maybe one day something will happen. Maybe one day. Oh my goodness. Have you ever met people 
Have you ever met somebody who's waiting on somebody who left the country five years ago, does not communicate much, and in their hearts, in their hearts, they believe that person is coming back to marry them, and so they don't want to relate with anybody, and it is so clear this joker is never coming back, but they are just holding on over there. Sometimes it is not hope. Sometimes it is fear. It is fear because they don't know what will happen in this new. They already know it did not work in the old. But what if I go into the new and the new also has its own challenges? So they are held back by fear. Held back by fear. If I start a business right now, what will happen? If I try to go into a class right now, what will happen? If I try to do something else right now, what will happen to it? And fear holds them back. Number three, friends. Friends. <laughs> friends. Friends can hold you back from adapting to new things. Friends can hold you back from adapting to new things. They will always tell you, you're not wired for that. You cannot do that. Why are you lying to yourself? And they keep on drawing you back to the person that you used to be. It is even more when you were trying to walk out of a habit that you have had. They will easily want to drag you back into the place that they have been. Most people struggle with seeing other people being different from them. The moment you choose to walk a different path, you begin to battle with the people who have known you. Sometimes they think that you choosing a different path is placing a sense of judgment on them for remaining in the same place. But sometimes it is not true. Sometimes it is not true. Friends can keep you from adapting to new normal. They'll just tell you, let's just be here. You'll be shocked at how many people will wake up every other day, even before the COVID-19, wake up every other day and gather in the estate and sit over there. They're energetic. They have abilities. They have capacity. Some of them have got great brains and they will sit there in the morning and they will sit there till evening and go to their houses and sleep and wake up tomorrow morning and get back into the place that they call a base and sit over there and nobody's doing anything with their life. Nobody wants to move into something new because they are so used to being with their friends that they don't know how to move away from their friends. So they just stick there. It's the normal way. Years ago we used to meet in a certain place. We were these young preachers and we used to meet in a certain place. At one point I just thought to myself, we're spending so much time over here, I'm not even seeing purpose in what we are doing here. I said, I'm not going back into that place anymore. We had not fought. We had not quarreled. I just knew that I needed to make adjustment and create a new normal for my life. Because eventually in your life, you are not going to blame the people around you. You're going to be responsible for the decisions that you make. And do not become a prisoner of the friendships you have to the point where you sacrifice your God dreams just because you did not know how to adapt to a new normal. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. I want to pray with us. I want to pray with us. The scripture says to us in that Genesis 9 20, and Noah began to be a farmer. <laughs> Noah began to be a farmer. He did not say I'm an engineer. He did not say I'm a builder. He didn't even say, you know, I've built a lot of things and they've come down and so let me just sit over here. And so God owes me because, you know, if God didn't say what he said, I would not uh, be where I am right now. He just knew that in every season in life, whatever your hand finds to do, you must do it with all your might. Stop waiting for what used to be. This is what you have. This is what you have. This is the day that the Lord has made. Today is the day you have. You can't keep talking about what happened 10 years, 5 years, 7 years ago, or even 3 months ago. This is where you are at. And you must learn how to embrace it. You must learn how to embrace it. Some people will say, and it will be in my number four F, some people will say, I don't have the finances. I don't have the finances, so I cannot start anything fresh. But ladies and gentlemen, it's not always about finances. It's not always about finances. 
because I want to give you an F that will deal with all of those others that I've given you. There is something called faith. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to the mountain, be moved and be cast into the sea. Faith will teach you how to start wherever you are. God had said in Genesis 8 and we did not read it in verse 22. He said to Noah when he came out of the ark and he had set up an altar and worshipped God and God was pleased with it. God said, never again will I release the floods over the earth. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest. That's all he had God say. When God sends the worship of Noah and the thanksgiving and the praise, even in the midst of all this calamity, God said, I'm not doing that again. I thought I would have time to give you about three signs that God gave us to show us that he will keep his covenant. I might just as well mention them. In that Genesis 8, when the flood had ceased, God put up a rainbow. Now, if you read it from the scripture, it says there was a bow in the clouds. And upon that bow, God said, this will be my sign that I will never again destroy man with the floods. That every time you will see the rains and the waters coming, you, when you see the bow, you will remember that I made a vow and a covenant. And I said, I will never destroy man again. Then the second time, it was the blood. The first time, it was the bow in Genesis 8. The second time in Exodus chapter 12, it was the blood. He said, when the angel of death will pass over, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Death will not visit you. The blood will be a sign for me that I cannot destroy you. But to us, he has given us my third B, which is the book of the law. He says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. But upon it you shall meditate day and night. And you shall do, observe to do all that is written therein, so that you may make your way prosperous and you will have good success. He gave the bow before. He gave the blood before. He has given us this book. We have the confidence in this book that he is with us and he will provide and protect us. He said to Noah, seed and harvest shall never cease. And Noah understood. And he said, you know what? I may not go back into building. But at least I know God said, if I sow the seed, I will have the harvest. And Noah began to become a farmer. What is it that God is saying right now? Because you can run with it. If you can take what the book says, even if you were not experienced in it, even if you were never trained in it, even if you have never been taught in it, if you can take what the book says, the book will never lie to you. The book will never lie to you. The blood preserved them in their houses. The bow kept them from the flood. The book, the book, the book carries amazing promises, ladies and gentlemen. This book of the law shall make you prosperous and give you good success. If you will take this word and meditate upon it and ask God, what do I do now? And begin to reshape and repaint your, your, your world right now using the scripture. You can start anything, anywhere, anyhow. So don't worry about what you're familiar with. 
Don't worry about the fear. That's what the enemy uses. Don't worry too much about your friends because they are part of the familiarity. Don't even worry about the finances. I keep on having some talks with my media team and we say when we started, we did not know how we were going to run our online ministry. <laughs> it looks easy because it just comes on your screen, but it costs quite much to run this every week. Six weeks down the line, God has been faithful. Because he just keeps on doing it. You walk in by faith and he ministers to your faith. So don't worry about the finances. If you will have faith in what God says and whom God is right now, you can succeed even in this season. There are industries that need to rise from this season. There are systems that need to rise from this season. There are methodologies that need to come up in this season. Noah and everybody else around him had lost everything. And he started a wine factory on a word that seed time and harvest shall not cease. I want to pray for somebody who needs to adjust to a new normal. You need to give your life to Jesus. Don't worry about your friends. Don't be afraid about what will happen in the future. Don't let the things you're familiar with hold you back. Probably God has shut down or allowed things to shut down right now so that you don't even struggle with the things that would have been a temptation to you. Probably that's why in this season there are no bars open, there are no clubs open. So the things that you were worried about, you said, I don't know how to get saved and not go over there. Now it is shut. Probably this is a very good season for you because what would have been a temptation has been dealt with and you have a season just to begin growing in the things of God. If you're there, you want to give your life to Jesus, I want to give you the opportunity and lead you. Say with me, Jesus, I believe that you're the Son of God. I believe that you came in the flesh. I believe that you were crucified. I believe that you died. I believe that you were buried and on the third day you rose again. I believe that you ascended on high to the Father and that you will come back again. So today, I confess that you are my Savior, you are my Lord, and you are my God. If you have made that confession, you're now born again. You're no longer a child of sin. You're no longer a child of disobedience. You were born again, sanctified, washed. You were justified by faith. You are now a son of God, born not of the flesh or of the will of the flesh, but born of the Spirit. Glory be to God. You now are the righteousness of God by faith. The old has passed. The new has come. You're a new creation. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Hosanna in the highs. Let us get to know that you have given your life to Jesus for prayers and counseling kindly. Send us mail or call us or text us. Send WhatsApp 721-556-159 on the covenant channel. Uh, on the covenant channel, you will find the email address right there. You will find the email uh, icon so you can send us mail and let us know that you have given your life to Jesus and we will be glad. We want to know how we can help you in your walk of faith and in your walk of salvation. Go ahead and let us know. Also, tell your friends about it. Tell your family that you have given your life to Jesus. Go ahead and testify to the rest of the people that you have given your life to Jesus. We want to know where you are so that we can direct you to places where you can find fellowship and worship and you can be grown as well in the things of the faith. Get yourself a Bible. You don't need a very complicated one for right now. Get yourself a Bible and begin in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Begin reading about Jesus. Get to know who he is. Get to know what he said. Get to know how he lived. What you have believed right now. And just begin to walk the walk of faith. Also keep it right here. Like our pages. Like us on, uh, uh, subscribe to our channel on YouTube. The Covenant channel. Subscribe right there. And you will get material that will feed you. Feed your spirit. Grow you and build you up. Follow us on the Covenant channel as well. On Facebook. 
New Birth Covenant Churches, the various pages on Facebook, depending on where you are, just do a search right there and follow us as well. You could also follow on the CJ Atemo page on Facebook, CJ Atemo on Twitter, CJ Atemo on Instagram, and CJ Atemo on YouTube as well, so that you can grow and be fed. I pray for everyone who is out over there who's dealing with sickness, disease, pain, any affliction. I pray for anyone who is out over there who is in fear and in bondage, anxiety. May the Lord heal you right now. May the Lord break every bondage. May the Lord set you free. May the Lord cast the roots of every sickness and disease. May the Lord lift up every burden from off your shoulders and your soul and make you be well, be whole from the top of your head to the soles of your feet right now in the name of Jesus. May God answer you in your day of trouble. May God minister to you. May God release and, su and supply all of your needs right now in the name of Jesus. May God supernaturally cancel debt for some of you. May he open doors for business for some of you in the name of Jesus Christ. You were blessed for life. There is no way you were going down. Make the adjustments by the spirit of the living God. There is wisdom available to you. You were blessed. You were blessed. Glory be to God. And now we just want to release you. Remember 3 p.m. we will be here. At 3 p.m. we will be here joining in the service. 3 p.m. And the revival, as we wind up the revival, we will be here as well. So we will see you then. If you came in late and you have not given your offering and your tithe, you might go ahead and do that. Uh, 655125 is our pay bill number. So if you came in, joined us late, and you have not given your offering, you can do that for your offering and your tithe. And then if you're using Wave, World Remit, or m 713 713-596-5522 is the number that you use glory be to jesus glory be to jesus glory be to jesus hallelujah to the lamb of god praise be to god praise be to god praise be to god we just want to release you with the grace of god and we see you in about two hours time feed on the word that you have received and lunch with your family right now just get yourself upbeat meditate on the word think about what you need to make adjustments in write down the notes for the things that you need to do pray about them get ready for a great week coming ahead of you in the name of jesus in this house we'll have to say shalom irene peace and prosperity nothing missing nothing lacking nothing shall be broken in your life in the name of jesus christ it is well with you it is well with you it is well with you glory be to god the Lamb of God, victorious, the risen Lord. He purchased our redemption, our righteousness is He. From your house, join us. Say with us, He alone. He alone is worthy to worship and adore the Lamb of God, victorious, our risen Lord. He purchased our redemption. Our righteousness is He. Our righteousness is He. Exalt the name. Exalt the name of Jesus. He is worthy. He alone is worthy. God bless you. See you at 3 p.m. The Lamb of God, victorious, the risen Lord. He purchased our redemption. He purchased our redemption. Our righteousness. Our righteousness is He. Exalt the name. Exalt the name. 
Oh, 